Thank you, Professor Abarambo. Uh, the 25 minutes means that the, the presentation necessarily will, will be very compressed and compact, but hopefully uh, it will be clear uh, both to the audience here and anyone who will later see it on videotape. Let me begin by pointing out that in talking about Africology, it does not signal that one is hostile to everything in the West, because after all, in this presentation, I do use a particular uh, method of inquiry uh, which Thomas Aquinas used in the 13th century because I find it very effective in, to present the sort of information that I, that I desire. Now, um, what I'll be doing, I'll be asking a series of questions and then giving a set of responses to each question. And again, as I said, I wish it were uh, original to myself Thomas had used it many centuries before. So then I begin by asking the question that my presentation is entitled Africology, the renaming of Afro-American studies, black studies, Pan-African studies, Africana studies, and etc. So the first question, why is naming of great importance? Why is it after all that, for example, when revolutionaries come to power, one of the first things which they do is to change the names of important symbols in the society. Naming is important, of great importance, because it, one, focuses attention, two, it signals identity, three, it structures expectations, four, it directs and guides behavior, St. Petersburg means something very different to Russians than Leningrad, just for example. Uh, five, it evokes a range of emotions. Six, it calls out a given tradition or set of traditions. And seven, it makes known a particular framework of belonging. So it doesn't matter what is being named, these seven apply. Second question. Why is it important that there should be one name for the body of knowledge and shared activity that is now called by the names Black Studies, Afro-American Studies, Africana Studies, Pan-African Studies, and etc.? Well, the many names just mentioned call out, one, the heap of activities out of which Afro-American studies, black studies, Africana studies arose as formal structures in universities in the American Academy. Protests, rebellions, occupying buildings, just for openers. <laughs> Two, the many names call out the diffuse rather than the sharp focusing of attention pertaining to the body of knowledge that constitutes the subject matter of the scholarly activities, that is to say the research teaching service, of the ones who participate in the formal structures, that is to say departments, divisions, programs, and so on, which bear names such as Afro-American studies, Africana studies, Pan-African studies, and etc. The many names call out the needless ambiguity, uncertainty, doubt, and confusion that now obtain concerning the range of ideas, concepts, events, actions, things, objects, and boundaries of space and time that are germane to the inquiry and discourse of those who engage in teaching and research in departments of black studies, Afro-American studies, Africana studies, and etc. The many names call out conjuries of problems pertaining to whether, say, black studies and Afro-American studies are synonymous terms, each naming the identical range of phenomena. Or is, for example, black studies more universal than Afro-American studies? And finally, the many names call out a range of questions concerning what are and should be the norms and expectations that guide behavior and activity of the ones who live off work in the formal structures that bear the names black studies, Africana studies, and so on and so forth. Third question. Why is the name Africology preferable to all of the names 
by which the subject matter activity and formal structures covered by the names I have just mentioned, that is to say black studies, Afro-American studies, on and on and on. Africology identifies very clearly and distinctly the African grounding of the cosmology origin and the ontology being that together provide the transgenerational and transmillennial connectives of its subject matter. Africology signals clearly and distinctly that it entails inquiry and discourse pertaining to the life histories and the life prospects of peoples of primary African origin universally, transmillennially, trans and transgenerationally. In the term Africology, Afrique is constructed to mean primary African origin and all relev relevant derivatives and relationships. And ology, inquiry, and discourse universally and transmillennially concerning persistence and change in the form and substance of these derivatives and relationships. And third, Africology is thus a body of knowledge and a range of activities grounded in normative and empirical inquiry and discourse pertaining to persistence and change in the conjuries of actions, events, things, objects, and relationships that have given form and substance to the life histories and signals the life prospects of peoples of primary African origin and their descent transmillennially, universally, and transgenerationally. Neither black studies, nor Afro-American studies, nor African-American studies, and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera, does with the sort of clarity and distinctiveness of Africology, what I have just mentioned, even though they all purport to do what I've called out to you just a moment ago. Number four. Is Africology an academic discipline, and what distinguishes it from other academic disciplines? This, of course, is a great bone of contention uh, in many institutions across this academy. Just as political science is identified and distinguished by its subject matter, namely politics, sociology by society, anthropology by anthropos, man, botany by plant life, zoology by animal life, and etc. In like manner, Africology is identified, distinguished by its subject matter in relation to the life histories and the life prospects of peoples of primary African origin and their descent universally and transmillennially. Just as anthropology, sociology, and political science, for example, all have distinctive subject matters, but nonetheless draw together many other subject matters in their respective universe of inquiry and discourse, so too does Africology. Protestations to the contrary notwithstanding, sociology, political science, and anthropology all share, and this is a critical point actually, critical point, point of great confusion in the academy, this school and elsewhere. Protestations to the contrary notwithstanding, political science, anthropology, sociology, all share common, not necessarily identical, methods and techniques of inquiry and discourse pertaining to the phenomena of the empirical world into which each scrutinizes. scrutinizes. This, of course, is quite consistent with the idea of, quote, the methodological unity of empirical science advanced more than two generations ago by the renowned philosopher Carl G. Hempel in his essay, The Function of General Laws in History. And for the persons who talk about uh, uniqueness of methods and techniques pertaining to discipline, I'll just simply recommend the Hempel essay, and I don't need to say anything more about it. For it is not uniqueness of method and technique of inquiry and discourse that separates and distinguishes political science from, say, history and philosophy or sociology from anthropology as individual academic disciplines, but the distinctiveness and universality of what may be called the grounding subject matter by which each is identified individually. And five, an Africologist thus 
need not be put on the defensive, as oftentimes people in Afro-American studies and black studies and etc. are. And Africologists need not be put on the defensive when called upon to answer the oftentimes entrapping question, namely, what are the methods and techniques of inquiry and discourse that are unique to the boundaries of Africology and set it apart or demarcate it from, say, sociology or anthropology as an academic discipline? This is a fundamentally polemical question usually used pejoratively. The conceptual and empirical the conceptually and empirically sound question is, rather, what is the distinctiveness of the subject matter of Africology and how universally is it? That is the question. Question number five. In spite of all that I have said thus far, isn't what I am calling Africology really an area study, more akin to African studies or Russian studies? or Eastern European studies, uh, rather than to disciplines such as political science, sociology, anthropology, and so on and so forth. Well, in response, Russian studies, Eastern European studies, and African studies are grounded in inquiry and discourse pertaining to peoples whose cultures and political economies are located, locatable, within discrete geographic boundaries. Africology, on the other hand, is not set in the context of cultures and political economies of some discrete geographic boundary with which its name is identified, but makes use of a discrete geographic boundary, in this case the continent of Africa, as the point of departure in the transmillennial, transgenerational, and global scrutiny of the life histories and life prospects of peoples whose ancestral origins are primarily African. As such, it is concerned fundamentally with the origins of human civilization and its transmutations over the millennia in the context of the life histories and the life prospects of peoples in the many societies and cultures of the earth where we find uh, individuals of African descent. What demarcates Africology, anthropology, political science, and sociology as disciplines from Europe Eastern European studies, Russian studies, and African studies as area studies is not, is not distinctiveness of subject matter, but universality of subject matter. African studies can never, be, can never subsume Africology, but Africology subsumes African studies both conceptually and empirically. Put differently, disciplines provide conceptual and empirical tools, if one may so speak, for area studies, which in turn add to the body of knowledge of a given discipline. Question number six. In spite of all that I have said so far, in reality, Africology is at best just another name for Africana studies, and at worst, a misleading, purportedly disciplinary representation of the subject, su the subject matter or substance of the activity of Africana studies. Well. Africology and Africana studies are not synonyms. They have different etymologies. Africology denotes discipline. Africana studies denotes area studies. There is, no, there is no difference here from, say, anthropology, which denotes discipline, and African studies, which denotes area studies. Second, both Africology and Africana studies presume specialists in their respective subject matters. However, the grounding of Africology takes for granting the use of specialists from a variety of uh, other disciplines. Uh, sorry, the grounding of African studies takes uh, for, for granted the use of specialists from a variety of other disciplines, whereas Africology, like sociology, political science, and so on, presumes specialists in that discipline. Both Africology and Africana studies subsume African studies, Afri Afro-American studies, black studies, and so on and so forth. But Africana studies is trapped by its nomenclature in signaling a non-disciplinary activity and organization of its subject matter. <laughs>